everyone today we're talking about praying for your future spouse. What's that about? Should you do it? Why or why not? Hey, we're Jackie and Bobby Angel with Ascension Presents. So, praying for your future spouse. Well, St. Paul, I think he he would say you should. It says in Philippians, it says, uh, in chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything, everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, some people are like, oh, praying for your future spouse is ridiculous, or it makes me anxious, or whatever. Like, I shouldn't be thinking about the future. It's like, listen, if you're going to talk about this with anybody else, then you absolutely should be talking about it with God. Because prayer is just conversation with God. So first of all, God is outside of time. So if you are called to marriage, he knows who your future spouse is. So of course, yes, pray for your future spouse. But also if this gives you anxiety, um, thinking about the future, I think prayer prayer is, again, you're communicating this with God, whatever is on your heart, whether you are anxious about it, whether you are excited about it, whether you're feeling lonely, all of that should be given to God in prayer, everything. And I, I would say too that just as we would pray for our health or our finances or our job, you know, our future, we should also then give uh, the other person that we're going to be aligned with to God in prayer, that they're being formed, that they're being um, a whole person, that they're being blessed in whatever they're going through, wherever they are, whenever we will get to be with them and unite. You know, there's no church document on soulmates. Like we don't subscribe to like the uber romantic Hollywood idea of a soulmate, but nor is it just a cold detachment either. God is guiding all things. God has his providential hand in our lives, you know, in the mystery of how that aligns with our free will that we are deciding our, our lives here, but God absolutely has a hand and cares who we marry, who we end up with, because that's going to affect generations upon generations. Part of prayer is a detachment. It's really saying, God, I trust you. I trust you with my future. I trust you in your plans. It's a detachment. It's learning how to be detached from the world. We have these desires, which are good. A lot of people desire marriage and family to have kids, and that's beautiful. But you know what? We're not guaranteed any of those. You guys, we're not even guaranteed tomorrow. Everything in prayer, it should be, we offer to God and we say, God, I'm all yours. I belong to you and I want what you want. Even that uh, modern obsession we have with romance and marriage and we turn it into an idol. Like that's going to satisfy the aches of our hearts. That's yeah. going to, I ride off into the sunset on, on our, my wedding day and then it's eternal bliss. It's like, no. But... I mean, yes, of course, yes, with you, honey. Al yes. Always, of course. Yeah. It's really a call again. Jesus, I trust in you. I place this in your hands. Help me not to make this marriage into an idol. Help me not to make this other person into an idol. I'll be happy when this happens. Like God yeah. wants us to live in the here and now, whatever may come, if we're blessed with a long life or we're not. So that could, that could be journaling for them. That could be doing a rosary for them daily. That could be just, again, quiet prayer. If this is an exercise you're brushing aside, be like, oh, this is dumb, this is stupid. Well, what's going on there? Is it that I don't really trust in God, that God cares enough? Do I, so I don't really think he cares about my happiness or, or the, the well-being of my life? Or maybe you don't think you are, you're, God, yeah, wants you to be happy or, at all. Like, yeah, maybe, that, does, maybe that's going on. Maybe, um, you know, I don't, from my own like experience, it could be like, you're too attached to your lust. I'm too attached to the way I'm living because to give that up to God, to, to give my romantic life to God would mean I have to surrender it. And if that's something that I'm, no, no, that's mine. Like, I'll give you some other things, God, but not this thing over yeah. here. It could be a sign of, the flippancy could be a sign of, well, I don't want God to take over this part, which is really like, this is where he needs to come in and, and clean house and rearrange some stuff in my life right now. Both of us, before we got married, we both knew that God was the one, like God was the one who satisfied every part of our hearts. We weren't looking for each other to do that. We both are in love with each other and love each other, but our whole goal in our marriage is to get each other to heaven, to get each other closer to God, really. That's that's the goal of our marriage. And so we are not God. We don't idolize each other. Um, he is my best friend, but at the same time, it's like we both know that God is the one who's going to satisfy our hearts and that when you pray, again, draw near to, it says in, I think it's James, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Um, I'm just going to leave you again with a scripture verse. If you have struggles with you know the future and discernment write this down philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7 
have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's the goal. The goal of prayer for anything is to keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And to really say with your future, your vocation, Jesus, I trust in you. <laughs> whatever you are calling me to do, whatever it is, if it's for a spouse and family, if it's to give myself fully to you, Jesus, I trust in you. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Please check out Ascension's other resources to help you on your walk with Christ.